What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today and today I have another model review for you guys. Today we have the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Breeze Airways Airbus A220-300 to review for you guys today. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video as Breeze is a really cool airline and this is a fantastic model by Gemini Jets. So without any further delay, let's not waste any further time and dive into this. We'll get started with the box today because the box is a critical component and this one wasn't in the bottom of my container so I was able to get this one very quickly for you guys so let's dive into this so here is the gemini jets box a very commonplace box for gemini jets right here as you guys can see we have the gemini jets logo made for collectors by collectors here's the cgi of the aircraft on the box airbus a220 300 the outstanding breeze logo one thing i love about this breeze airways logo is it looks good on almost any background especially just a nice plain background like this so really cool right there in one of the front scale die cast model aircraft uh, here is the side of the box, as you guys can see, just nice and simple, it looks fantastic. Of course, with the updated Gemini Jets uh, layout for their boxes here, but it looks really good. Here's the back of the box, as you guys can see. I'm uh, not seeing any Breeze Airways licensing, which is pretty interesting, but yeah, so pretty interesting. Uh, also not seeing much for Airbus either, so I guess this is a, um, let's see if I can find the Matrix. Um, okay, I thought that they said that everything was licensed, but nevertheless, it's one of those things, so it's all good. Or actually, yep, there it is, found it. Officially, officially licensed markings. Hmm. Well, there we go. Anyways, still great to have this box and it looks really good right here. And also, let's go into the pamphlet. Here's the pamphlet. Feel free to pause the read right there if you'd like to. And we obviously have the inside there with the plastic cradle. All right, ignore all that background. Uh, all the background shenanigans right there. Let's dive into the model itself. Alrighty, here she is. Really nice model by Gemini Jets. This came out in May of 2022, I believe. Uh, very quick turnaround after the uh, Breeze Ember 195 that was released in March. So this actually may have been April. It was somewhere in that time frame. It was Q2 of 2022. But yes, had this model for about six months now. And like I said, I've really grown a sweet spot for Breeze. They're a really cool airline. They obviously fly to my hometown airport, Tulsa International Airport. And they've had uh, several routes already. So really cool airline. And I'm really excited to dive into the infrastructure of this model aircraft. So without any further delay, let's get a good lighting setup on this aircraft. Turn the camera, zoom in, get a little bit closer and get this thing kicked off. All right. So here we go, everybody. We're gonna begin right here with the cockpit windows. Really nicely done here on the Airbus A220. And here's the nose cone as well. Quite an interesting shape. I'm not very educated on it yet. So I'm trying to learn uh, what they look like. I've only seen Delta and one Breeze one, but it was that night, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, here's the nose landing gear right here. This is my number one, I don't wanna say complaint because I'm not trying to complain, but just proportionally speaking, the A220's nose landing gear, I don't believe it's this tall. Uh, it was previously plastic, but it did have the correct height. Uh, unpopular take, but I actually would take that plastic over the increased height with the metal one. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I'm very open to both uh, compromises, to be honest. But yeah, it's one of those things that's tough, but it, you know, this is still a really nice model and I can't take away from how nice this aircraft look so it's one of those things but i just thought i would note for anybody that's interested this is a little bit tall compared to your real life counterpart here are your pedo, pedo tubes and all those fun details uh generally does a, does a really good job with their printing it's top notch and i think they did a great job here with this as well and looking at this livery it kind of comes up on camera yeah you can really see it when i get that pin out of the way but the livery in the coloring and i've really noticed this over the last couple of years this isn't a complaint just the observation uh it seems really sparkled glossy that sort of thing you can really see on the fuselage and maybe if i tilt it into the light you guys can really see what i'm talking about a little bit you guys can really see it right here in this area where the light before it comes onto it you can really see that just like gloss type printing material and there's no problem with that perhaps they used a higher quality coloring that now includes gloss because i've really noticed this on a variety of their models american airlines liveries breeze airways pretty much anything that's not a euro white so it's an interesting uh, characteristic but you know it kind of adds some color to it so you know it's nice and vibrant to say the least so still looks good nevertheless all right getting back into our aircraft though we do have the hatch right here which is really nice and then we have the l1 boarding door right here with the hatch too uh it will be very interesting to see if they ever join the alliance um definitely not for the immediate future but maybe the low-cost carriers will form you know i know like allegiance working with viva aerobus so maybe they'll do some something a little bit bigger in the future we we shall see here's the breeze airways uh logo right here looks really nice on the a220 i think they did a really good job constructing that kind of surprised it's not pushed more outward the actual aircraft not the uh model itself but pretty interesting I believe this is 100% accurate. 
here is where you have the nicest cabin. So Breeze Airways has three types of cabin. Nice, nicer, and nice is on their E220s provides is the only aircraft that provides nice is product. And what that is, is essentially a first class seat, which looks really cool. So I'm very excited to try that in your future, hopefully. And I'm excited to see what that's all about. So here in the front, I believe there's now three rows of it in most of their E220s at this point. Uh, here's the antenna. It seems a little big. Again, not a huge complaint, just an observation on my side. Again, guys, I'm never trying to complain when I do these mall reviews. I'm simply just observing what I see and just giving you guys that um, assessment. So it's never to complain, just simply going over the characteristics from what I see. I think the model is really good. Speaking of another really good element, how about these engines right here? These are really nice. I believe these are General Electric engines. Am I right on that? Pratt & Whitney engines, excuse me. So these are the Pratt & Whitney PW15 24 G3 engines. So excuse me on that. So here they are. They look really nice and let's get an angle there. You know, they're a little tilted up, but outside of that, the sizing is really nice on those and they did a really good job constructing that. So they look fantastic. You'll have an exhaust back there too, with some really nice detail too. Here's your emergency exit. You have one single door on the E220 300 variant. And we also have the pad right there, which is a little different. It's much more narrow compared to some of your other mainline airplanes like the 757, uh, 737, that sort of thing. So pretty interesting there. Now, if you're gonna do a two-piece Molina aircraft, this is how you're supposed to do it because this looks fantastic. No gap, well, I mean, very marginal. It's not tellable from, you can't tell from glancing, barely tell from the camera. Really nice job. I mean, it looks fantastic. If you're going to do a two-piece mold, this is how you want to do it. So I see where two-piece molds can be really helpful when you do them really nicely like this. But if you can't do them like this, then is it even worth it, in my opinion? But really good job on the two-piece mold. This is how you're supposed to do it. Great job by Jim Knight for casting that JC or whoever has to mold Herpa, one of those guys at this point. Here's the wings, really good detail in here. You can see the indentations for the flaps and also the lines across. You got your slat detail right there and the absolutely stunning Breeze Airways check mark. Uh, winglets, sharklets, something along those lines. So I get the camera to focus on that. Ah, eh, it almost had it. You guys can see it though. The check mark looks really nice on that. So good job there uh, by getting that for Breeze. And here's the inside look. Uh, I don't know why the check mark's on the inside. That probably should be on the inside too, but yeah, still looks pretty good though. All right, here's the back of the aircraft, as you guys can see. Um, is that a gap? I think that is a gap on the wing. That is unfortunate. So as soon as I give them all the praise on the gap, on the gap not being there, I not find where it is. So tough stuff, but at least it's not noticeable from the front. Still looks really good. I can't complain with that. Uh, here's the casting. You kind of see where that mold goes into detail right there. So good job on the... Uh, Casting that looks really cool. You also have your back two antennas. Again, slightly too big, not a huge deal. Not here to complain, just observing. Flybreeze.com, that's their website, of course, and glad they're advertising that on the side of their planes for customers that are on other aircraft or plane spotting like myself. And then we have the US flag with the registration November 203 at Bravo Zulu. This is the very first one they got, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the first one they got, so it looks good. And here is the Atel. Of course, Breeze has their check mark. I think it looks better from this side on the left. That looks like a normal check mark to me. The right still looks good, but it's kind of reverse reciprocal, if that makes sense, but still really nice. You also have some inspection panels, the horizontal stabilizer, APU detail, and everything else one can need to know on this side. Check mark. Uh, three shades of blue are very interesting. I think they turned out really nicely here. This is almost more of like a tan or a white, so this looks really good on this side. On the right side of the aircraft, of course, you have all your detail. This is what I was expecting it to more look like uh, with it scooted out on the other side. It looks really close, but that's actually because it's right next to the door. On this side, it's actually scooted out. Personally, I prefer it scooted out, but it's one of those things that you can't control, but I think it looks better here on the right side, just a personal preference there. Uh, you have your luggage door right there. It looks really good too. Uh, you can really see that gloss there on the color that I was referencing there on the front of the nose right there. So that's kind of what I was talking about. Uh, a couple of very small printing nitpicks, not a huge complaint. You can barely tell from a glance, but the camera does kind of show these off. Looks like the uh, R1 door is maybe tilted slightly to the right in the printing. Not a huge deal, just a little note there. And on the Breeze Airways uh, logo itself, it looks like it's kind of sloped down on the left side, especially. So that's tough, but hey, it's okay. It still looks really good. All right, here is the right uh, wing here. You can see the engine's a little bit pointed down. In fact, let me see if I can... Okay, I can't push it back up because it's glued, but I wish I could like put it back into place. So unfortunately, I guess you could take it off if you really wanted to work with it, but it's one of those things. It's okay. It's not a huge deal. Uh, once again, here's the right side. looks really good. Here's the winglet in some better detail. You guys can see what I'm talking about. Still think it should be on the outside there too, but still looks great. Uh, everything's the same over here. You have your baggage door right there. And here's the check mark on this side. I still think it looks really good on this side. I just do think that here on the right side, 
it looks like an actual check mark, or at least I'm used to the small portion going out to the left. Check marks can go either way though. They're really nice and commonplace to say the least. Sorry that I forgot to do this on my previous Delta MD-80 reviews, but here is the top of the aircraft. You got some really good detail up there. It looks fantastic. Glad to get to see that right there. Great job. And here is the bottom. One of the coolest features of the Breeze Airways livery, in my opinion, is the uh, Breeze logo on the underbelly. So kind of getting after Delta there, but really cool because most U.S. carriers don't do that. I think it's just United, or I'm sorry, Delta and Breeze. And United, I don't think they do it right now, but we'll see if that changes in the future. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Alrighty, everybody, and let's take a look around the aircraft. Let me see if I can get the camera propped a little bit better. There we go. So here is the front. Oh man, the lighting's so good right there. But there is a view of the front left. And here's the view of the left in general. Here is a view of the back left. And here's a look at the back. Nice, pretty nice level wings. You also have the landing gear, which are also now uh, metal or just some sort of different material. I'm not sure what it's particularly called, but I think it would be a metal or aluminum or something like that. Here's the back right. And here is the right side of the aircraft. Let's see if I can get that lined up, tight space there. Yeah, it's pretty good right there. And here is the front right. And lastly, the front of the aircraft right here. Alrighty, let's talk some facts on the Breeze Airways Airbus A220. So the Breeze A220 has been a key component of the Breeze Airways fleet here for the last, um, I think these went into service earlier, I think it was earlier this year when Breeze started operating these, and they've been a really key component for Breeze Airways' fleet. So this is Airbus E220-371. I didn't know that was the type, so that's pretty cool for the 371 particularly. Serial number is 55128. Like I said, registration is November 203, uh, Bravo Zulu. There are two Pratt & Whitney pw 154 one five two four g3 engines on this which is very cool the first slide this particular aircraft was october 20th 2021 and the delivery date of 203 was december 17th of 2021 the max takeoff weight for the a220 is 150,000 pounds pretty commonplace for a aircraft the size of this and the cruising speed is 515 miles per hour the range very nice range here for the a220 300 3,679 miles so you could fly really far you could probably take these to Hawaii from the West Coast if you wanted to. And the seating, 130 mixed class, which I think is around what these are, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe slightly more with a little bit more economy there, but still really cool. Also, I'm sorry I forgot to explain, for, uh, I forgot to explain the rest of the cabin. Uh, the intermediate portion from the nicer to here, somewhere in this ballpark, is where you have, um, I hope I didn't get a pin mark. No, I didn't. Okay, thank goodness. Uh, this is the nicer section. This is your economy plus on other airlines, so additional legroom, that sort of thing. And lastly, the back half is your economy or nice, which is still a really good product, to be honest. So really cool. And yeah, Breeze is a fantastic airline. Like I said, I'm so glad to have the Airbus E220 model and also my Ember 195. I also asked for the 1200 E220 for Christmas. So we'll see if I end up getting that one or not. That would be a very cool one to add. Uh, I think it would be a really nice addition. Now my soft spot for Breeze, like I said, has developed uh, pretty tremendously as of late. So obviously um, kind of a little bit biased for this reason, but Breeze Airways, one of their initial, I think it was 15 or 16 destinations was Tulsa, Oklahoma. That obviously sparked my interest immediately. And they started flights to Tampa, New Orleans, and Saint, or San Antonio. Uh, unfortunately, they flew very high frequencies on these and uh, San Antonio and New Orleans did not pan out. So unfortunately, those got cut in November of 2021. So they made it about uh, six months or so. I wish they would have flew less frequencies, but it's one of those things, not horrible initial choices. I'm really surprised they couldn't get more traction on New Orleans particularly, but hopefully uh, they'll be able to return to those markets in the future or something like that. So we shall see. Uh, Tampa remained and Tampa was a sole route there for a while. And then in March of 2022, Breeze Airways announced nonstop service to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And that service started in June. I was lucky enough to be on the inaugural flight, which is really when I fell in love with Breeze and their product and what they're all about. Really simple airline. The title literally implies what they are. And you really couldn't do much better in terms of product. And I'd highly recommend checking out that trip report I posted on the Breeze Ember 190 from Nashville to Tulsa. If you're interested in learning about the Breeze Airways story and what they're all about and the product and that sort of thing. So I flew the inaugural, like I said, and then um, Nash, or I'm sorry, Tampa unfortunately got temporarily suspended after August 14th. I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment, so keep that in mind, but it got temporarily suspended, quote. And Nashville also got temporarily suspended from June of 2022, uh, late June, I think it was like the 21st or so, it was somewhere in later June, till I think it was October 3rd. Uh, then uh, Nashville resumed October 3rd. This was initially gonna be a seasonal route only, but uh, Breeze did choose to make this a year-round service, quote, 
year round and it lasted till uh, November 28th. So they flew for about two more months on the A220 predominantly, a couple substitutions, but predominantly the A220. And uh, Nashville was first to go uh, for the next bunch of routes that are gonna be uh, at least cut for the moment. Nashville is not coming back as a summer seasonal next year, unfortunately. Um, I'll have to give my thoughts on that a little bit here in a moment, but that's getting cut. And then unfortunately, very disappointed about this, but Breeze has since cut Tampa as well. Uh, it's supposed to come back next summer as a summer seasonal, which I didn't know why that even made sense to begin with because 80% plus load factors in February of 2022 is very impressive in my opinion with the uh, situation at hand and everything that was going on. So they were obviously doing really well with that. Summer loads weren't great anyways, so I was trying to figure out why it wasn't a winter seasonal to a degree, but summer is our highest travel period too. So I don't know, it was really inconsistent to a degree. And then, uh, yeah, but I'm still very upset about that to be quite honest. And I really hope they bring that back in the future, but at least Breeze Airways is not giving up on Tulsa at all. They're gonna be starting nonstop service to Orlando MCO, the international airport in Orlando on uh, March 1st, 2023. So that'll be Ember 195 twice a week, Wednesday, Saturday. If they can't make success on that route, they might as well just leave the airport. Uh, there's no excuse on that flight. I think the inaugural already has like, we're still like four months out and already has, I think like um, 20 people on it. So we're obviously gonna see success on that route. And I'm very hopeful that that will turn into our new Orlando service permanently. I think they need to get that up to like three or four times a week. Like why don't you start three or four times a week to Orlando and Tampa rather than San Antonio and New Orleans. Um, those routes aren't bad choices. They just need the proper advertising promotion, that sort of thing. But this is not an aviation um, marketing rant. This is just breeze in general. So let's get back to breeze. But in all seriousness, with all their other routes that they've started, they've done a really good job, especially on those northeast to southeast ones, like Tampa to Syracuse, for example. Uh, there's some, been some really good routes that they've added into their network that I think have been a huge benefit to them. They've also added some um, not or monopoly or no competition routes from east coast to west coast. So Syracuse to uh, Las Vegas is another one that comes to mind. They have some really cool routes, and I'm excited to see what Breeze can do with these A220s. They also have several Ember 190, 195s. I'd recommend trying to catch those before they get retired. Probably in the next couple of years would be my guess, but Breeze Airways is going to have a bright future in the United States. They have a great financial backing system, and they are looking to expand like crazy in 2023. Uh, Tulsa's suggestion routes, uh, San Antonio, or blah, blah, blah. San Diego and San Francisco would be great route choices for us. I think those would do super, super well. So I'm very hopeful that they choose to add those. Other possible suggestions would include, um, uh, you know, if they ever get up to the Northwest, a Seattle flight would be great. If Alaska is not gonna start it, those are our top three unserved markets, by the way. But uh, long-term international flight to Cancun would also be cool. But more realistically speaking, a Fort Myers, Jacksonville, those kind of routes would be cool. Um, they would need quite a bit of promotion to be successful, but I think those are possible. Tampa coming back. Uh, West Palm Beach and Miami are other thoughts, along with Fort Lauderdale. Those three airports I think would be cool. Um, but yeah, Fort Myers is a big one. I, we don't have any service in that region at all. Um, New Orleans coming back, I'm honestly not opposed to that. I think that if they did proper advertising twice a week on the 190, it would be a great service there, so maybe that will come back. Uh, I know that they added Phoenix out of Fayetteville, which is a close by airport. We have quite a bit of service there, so uh, I don't think Phoenix is quite the right choice for us, but Las Vegas, they could easily go against Southwest and Allegiant, who have both been very successful in that flight over the last many years. So that would be another great opportunity for Breeze. Um, and many others too, I mean, there's a long list. Um, other top unserved markets, I think that we have quite a bit of demand in Sacramento. I don't know why Sacramento particularly, but we do. So that would be an interesting flight for us. Um, I'm going on, off. Uh, they could also go after many routes that are already being served by airlines, like Orlando, like they did with Allegiance. So those are options too. Miami as well, like I said, I think that would be a great route. Um, I'm trying to think of any others before I round this out because I know I've been talking for too long. Um, Charleston nonstop, long-term, maybe, but now we have a breeze through, which it gives Orlando another reason. There's no a way that that is unsuccessful, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Florida's a great market. Um, and then some of these competing routes. Nashville, summer seasonal, really isn't a bad idea at all. They didn't even give it a chance during the summer, which is like three flights. <laughs> they all were actually doing okay. So you gotta give something a chance before you cut it, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they build in their market. Um, you know, there's a lot of interesting routes that they could add for sure out of Tulsa and other cities in the region too, and just in general. I know that they're having tremendous success in the Southeast as well. Uh, they could really provide some great point-to-point -point traffic and I think they just gotta orientate towards that. 
Um, yeah, West Coast though for us particularly with Breeze, San Francisco, San Diego, um, Las Vegas even, even though we already have that, still great opportunity there for them to add that. Um, and many more hopefully. I'm hoping that's like, you know, them flying like Houston or something would be interesting or like, um, I don't know, um, Atlanta or something trying to compete with some of those guys. But you know, the low cost model is so popular nowadays. Like for instance, Delta's the only airline on Atlanta. We don't have a low cost carrier there. Um, Houston Intercontinental is the only airport that United or United is the only airline that flies there from here. We obviously have to stop with Hobby, but long story short, before I get on too big of a tangent, I think they have huge potential. They're doing really well. And if you'd like to check out my trip report for a little bit more detail, feel free to do so. But I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Really cool model. Very excited for the 1200. I'll be sure to review that uh, sometime next year. It's a really cool model and I'm excited to get it. And I hope you guys are excited for the review. But nevertheless, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My name is Shredder of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Shredder of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys soon as Shredder of Aviation is signing off.